extremely difficult and complicated situation. Uh, there is a crisis in Egypt, and the way to move Egypt beyond crisis and towards a better future uh, is for the authorities to embrace a process that is inclusive, uh, that leads to a transition uh, back to a civilian, democratically elected government, uh, and that uh, responds to the hopes and aspirations of the Egyptian people, of all the Egyptian people. Well, the Muslim Brotherhood is already right here in our own backyards. They and their supporters have managed to infiltrate just about every level of government, and they wield tremendous influence. But it didn't happen overnight. This has been a steady incursion aided by our own politicians, and it's happened before in an almost identical manner. So just how did it happen? What's the process? Diana West is the author of American Betrayal, and she joins us now to give us some insight. Diana, welcome. Hi, Eric. Thank you. Hey, it is always great to see you. Your, your new book is an absolute must-read. It is riveting. It, I'm losing sleep over it, but I need to know. <laughs> the parallels you draw, Diana, between the Cold War era, era, where we had Soviet spies littered throughout our government in the halls of power, and what we're seeing now with Brotherhood operatives again in the halls of power, to me, are striking. In researching your book, Diana, did you find that we do not learn from the mistakes of the past? We don't learn from history? Yes, and that the, the reason we don't learn from history is that we do not teach this history, we do not know this history. The extent of the penetration, and this is even before the Cold War, what we think of as the Cold War, the penetration began under FDR in the 1930s to a point where we had about, we had hundreds of American traders working for Stalin and at the highest levers of power of our government, media, and so on. And they were able to shape policy through influence. Espionage is not just matters of stealing secrets. It is influencing policy. And the parallels today where we look at the infiltration of Muslim Brotherhood front groups, tranches of Saudi and other Middle Eastern money, uh, oil, oil oligarch money, into our system is a huge, massive influence operation, and it has been stunningly successful because we have stopped talking about jihad, we have stopped educating about jihad, and we don't even use the word. So this is where you see parallels to our past when we were doing the same thing with communism. Our government whitewashed communism during World War II, just as our government in the post-9-11 era has whitewashed Islam. Yeah, an interesting point you make in the book, Diana, is back then, you were called a red baiter if you went after the yes. Soviet agents here. Now you're called an Islamophobe. So you had political correctness yes. back then, and that really, you describe in the book how it laid the groundwork for the mess we're in today, right? Yes, exactly. It is such a stunning parallel, again, because words like that are conversation enders. They put the person who may be merely asking a question, raising a matter for further discussion, debate, thought, it puts them on the defensive. And the way these words are used, they are used as smearing terms that end the conversation, that end all thought of the conversation. So again, these are ways to block our information, to make us helpless, and really to make us go forward in blindness. And so, very important point, Eric. It's amazing to me, Diana, that really the seeds for the march towards socialism we're seeing right now in this country, as you lay out in the yeah. book, was really kind of engineered by these Soviet agents decades ago. Talk a right. bit more about how they laid the groundwork for not only political correctness, but socialism and, and really leftist thought control. Yes, well, the leftist thought control is really our inheritance along with the socialism. I mean, we say we won the Cold War, and yet with a Republican majority in the Congress, we can't get Republicans to vote to defund socialized medicine. And I repeat, socialized medicine, this is another term that we have been trained not to think of. We've been trained not to think of President Obama in terms of socialist policies. I mean, again, we've been thought controlled not to have these very frank, natural discussions. Um, this is a legacy of uh, decades of conditioning. When we had this period under FDR where hundreds of agents moved into positions of power, 
They left a legacy, and indeed they extended Soviet strategy right into the halls of our own power. And in the book, I discuss how they actually affected our strategy during World War II so that we ended up thinking we won World War II by by overthrowing a monster named Hitler. However, we basically instated another monster, an even greater monster named Stalin, who at the end of World War II had an empire in Europe that Diana, basically yeah. replaced the Nazi empire. Yeah, and just as we have slick Islamist spokesmen now in the halls of power telling our administration, hey, the Muslim Brotherhood are good guys. We can deal with them. We can work with them. Back then, you lay out in the book how right. these Soviet agents of influence, and this is documented. Look, this is not just alarmism. They were in the halls of power, yeah. Soviet agents. They were saying the same thing about Stalin, right? We can deal with old Uncle Joe. He's exactly. a good guy. Exactly. Well, during World War II, an agency came up called the Office of War Information. Essentially, we had wartime censorship during the entire war controlled out of this particular Washington agency. Well, after the Soviet archives opened and the FBI uh, files became declassified and so on, we are now able to know without, a f without any doubt whatsoever that, for example, in that Office of War Information, you had scores of Soviet agents controlling, controlling the flow of information to the American people. Of course, Uncle Joe became a family name, or rather a, 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 a household name Uncle Joe in America. Stalin. This was the propaganda. Uncle Joe Sta Just Stalin, a big teddy one of the bear. great monsters of human history. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And we see, we see similar influence going on today. Um, back in the day, we had a Secretary of State named Statinius, and one of his top aides was a Soviet agent named Alger Hiss. The infamous. Who oversaw the formation, the infamous Soviet agent Alger Hiss, who oversaw the formation of the United Nations. And we wonder why the United Nations is so anti-American. Well, the origins come out, of, yeah. uh, come out of Moscow. I mean, this is something we never actually connect. Diane, let me ask you. Moving Moving forward, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I have to ask you. No, so that's fine. We have people yeah. like yourself and me and Glenn and others today who warn about this radical Islamist yeah. threat in our backyard and, and in our halls of power. Now, we're shouted down, we're called racist, bigot, Islamophobe, etc. By, by the left, and even by the mainstream media, of course. How were the opponents and, and the watchmen and women on the wall about this Soviet influence operation during the Cold War, how were they treated? Yes, well, it's a very good question, and I consider them sort of the heart of my book. I call them the truth tellers, and they really are the inspirational core of the, of the book because they are people Americans, sometimes not Americans, people so loyal to truth that they endured the smearing, the isolating, the utter marginalization that would, that would attack them when they tried to say, hey, we are under attack inside. We are being victimized by a dirty secret intelligence war that we now know was true. We now have confirmation, but back in the day, the left, the media, the agents all argued that no, there was absolutely, that you're thinking they're communists under the yeah. bed, right? I mean, you are, you must be a crazy person. Yeah. This is what they endured. They were demonized. And of course, the leading figure there would be Senator Joe McCarthy, who became the symbolic uh, leader of this, this attempt to get our arms around this Soviet penetration. Of course, he is now considered the most maligned man in in American history, but what now that we have this body of confirmation, it is time for a reassessment of Joe McCarthy. Very interesting. As outrageous as that sounds to most people's ears, because they're so used to thinking of him as the great demon, mm. he, along with other great investigators yeah. in the Congress, Democrat and Republican alike, were looking at this problem and gave us the records that we now have, that we can now confirm from these Soviet archives and FBI files, and we know what we are up against. And it's time for us to understand we are undergoing it again. See, this, this is, is happening why, again. This is why people need to pick up, one of the many reasons, Diana, people need to pick up the book, because you're hitting points. I mean, you're revealing history in this book. You must have done such extensive research, because you're revealing some history in this book I had no idea about. And you really got the gears yes. turning in my head. I mean, when you were researching Good. this book, I mean, you and I are friends, so we talked in the process. And you, what you started out on, you kind of, the book ended up something completely different, sort of, right? Very a different. In the, in the end? Very different. Very different. Well, what I was trying to start with, I was trying to understand how we could get hit on 9-11 and have the President of the United States tell us Islam is a religion of peace. 
made no sense. It was illogical. And as a journalist, as a, as a weekly columnist, I work with words all the time as you do and understand that to get into the public square, to advance a journalistic career, for a politician to advance, every fact that you said out loud had to support this illogical statement, Islam is a religion of peace. And indeed, I began to understand that in terms of being an ideological statement. This was a belief that people had to fool with facts to support. I found precedent for this going back in time. Big lies became part of the American landscape with our relationship with the Soviet Union. Communism was okay. Uncle Joe was a good guy. Islam is a religion of peace. We have to start examining things from a new kind of logical, fact-based process. And it's amazing because Not just because emotional. We, yeah. I, I was going to say, Diana, it's yeah. amazing because we won the Cold War, right? We won. At least we thought we well, did. But we thought we did. Exa but We're the told influence we did. lives on. They won. It yeah, seems that the cultural, on. exactly, influencing society, yes. Diana, as you describe in the book, the cultural yep. Marxists. We won't. We might right. not get you, but we'll get your children. That was one of the rallying cries, right? Exactly. And, and exactly. And anyone, anyone who's gone to college with a belief in liberty and free markets understands that almost every American campus is essentially an outpost of Marx. How can you then say, yeah. we won the Cold War? I mean, it... it, it we're being snowed essentially by our leaders. Yeah, look at our media, look at our elected leadership, look at look at our schools, our children being yes. brainwashed. So Diana, I can't thank you enough and everyone has to pick up the book American Betrayal. Buy it. It is mind blowing. You need to read it. Diana, thank you so much. We'll see you soon again. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Coming up, much more on Egypt and the crisis there with two leading Middle East experts. Stick around.